Hello everyone. So today we have a really interesting uh, problem in number theory, and we're going to be looking at arithmetic, modern arithmetic, and uh, kind of bashing and reducing uh, with mod n. Now this is a classic number theory problem actually, and in most number theory problems, especially involving equations, you kind of have to like reduce it to some simplified cases, some simplified forms that is kind of easier to deal with than what is given in the given equation. So let's see maybe how we can deal with this problem, and uh, yeah, let's proceed. This is the problem number A5 from the Putnam exam in 2001. So this is the second last problem on the morning section of the test. And this is pretty much hard actually. And in this video, we're going to be looking at what model arithmetic is, kind of reducing modern and bashing. This is going to be like a bashing solution, bashing techniques. And after that, we're going to be looking at certain book sessions for college mathematics. And at the end, a similar level challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so let's see what they've given us. So they want us to find all ordered pairs a comma n so that a is for n plus one minus a plus one raised for n is equal to 2001. Well, there are a couple of ways to proceed with this. One thing that I can probably see is that um, I have these terms with a over here, right? a, a plus one and things like that. So why not maybe take something like mod a and then proceed with going for mod a plus one. Then maybe an idea would be to take a uh, mod some factor of 2001. So for example, mod three might not be a bad idea as three essentially divides 2001. So th these are like certain ideas that come to my mind. and. The most natural one is, you know, obviously you have these terms with A over here. So why don't we just like bash mod A, right? Let's maybe try bash mod A and let's see, let's just see what we get. So if I take mod A on both sides, I'll get zero minus one raised power N is congruent to 2001 mod A. Because um, obviously this comes just from the fact that one plus X is for N is one plus N choose one X plus n choose 2 x square and so on and so forth up till n choose n x is for n. Yep. So essentially, 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 if I just replace this as 1 plus a is for n and I just take maybe mod a over here. So all of these terms become 0 and we are left with is, is, is essentially just 1, right? All of these terms become 0 as uh, they're divisible by a, right? x becomes a essentially over here. So like I was saying over here, this thing, this thing just becomes one mod a. So that this is essentially becomes one raised power n is congruent to 2001 mod a. Right? Pretty easy. And one raised power n is obviously going to be one, right? One raised power n is all, always going to be one, no matter what the value of n is. This is just simply negative one is equal to 2001 mod a. Or in other words, 2002 is congruent to 2002 is congruent to zero mod a. Okay, that's great till then. So now that we've received this, now because 2002 is zero mod a, what does, what does congruence essentially mean? So for example, if a is congruent to b mod, let's say n, so a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n. But if I say that a is congruent to zero mod n, so essentially the remainder when a is divided by n is zero, right? So using the same kind of logic over here, we can just say that a divides 2002. For example, for example, if I was figuring out, let's say 42, now 42 is congruent to zero mod seven. What does that mean? That seven essentially divides 42. The remainder when 42 is divided by seven is zero. So yes, just using that idea, A is, uh, A actually divides 2002 and 2002 can be actually represented as two into seven into 11 into 13. And why, why did I write that? Cause that essentially, reduces the number of possibilities of a so a essentially divides 2002 there are finite numbers of divisors of a so there are only a finite number of possibilities for what a can be or rather more importantly there are just some finite number of cases that we can resolve this problem into and i think that was really essential because this is one of the steps that i see whenever whenever like i just take mod some value for example in a, in a number theory problem if i just take mod 7 and beyond a point, if the if the like if the equation what I'm given if, if the problem is not simplifying, it's not reducing to a smaller value or a value that is easier to deal with, then that means I'm probably on the wrong path. But over here, because of the fact that we kind of reduce the number of possibilities of a, we're actually on the right path. So mod a taking mod a was actually a very very useful step, right? 
that's kind of the intuition behind mod a but anyways let's uh, maybe move forward now let's bash mod a plus one right let's reduce mod a plus one and um how, how will that work so what's the given equation right the given equation is this okay a is for n plus one minus a plus one raised to the n is equal to 2001 now the good thing to note is that a plus one is actually congruent to zero mod a plus one right that makes sense so essentially a is congruent to minus one mod a plus one and essentially a raised to the power n is congruent to minus one raised to the power n mod a plus one okay that's great because if i take mod uh, a plus one on both sides of this equation this will obviously be zero and this will reduce to minus one raised to the power n plus one is congruent to 2001 mod a plus one and well that's great because um because uh, essentially now there's nothing more that can be done over here you don't really know the parity of n right n is odd will give you uh, plus one and n is even will give you minus one but we don't really know what n is over here so so um can't really comment more on that so up till then we have received two results this is obviously the f this is obviously the second result that we had received and the first result that we had received was um a little bit over here a is congruent to zero mod n what was it a is uh so a divides 2002 yeah or rather this result 2002 is zero mod a let me write it like that 2002 is effectively zero mod a so these are a couple of results that we had um we had gotten till now now, if you actually see the equation, what, was, what it was, a is for n plus 1 minus a plus 1 is for n is equal to 2001. Like I was saying before, 3 is like a factor of 2001. So why not just use mod 3, yeah? Why not try bashing mod 3? So essentially, the idea is initially we we're trying to make the left hand side 0 by taking mod a and mod a plus 1. Now we'll take maybe like mod 3 and make the right hand side 0. And effectively, when you take mod 3, what happens is that a raised to the power n plus 1 minus a plus 1 raised to the power n is congruent to, obviously, 0 mod 3, right? Now, effectively, now here's a claim that I'll make. I'll make like a claim and then we'll analyze that. So the claim is that a cannot be 0 or uh, minus 1 mod 3. So for example, let's just consider if a is, uh, let's say, 0 mod 3. So if a is 0 mod 3, then this thing will be 0 mod 3, but this thing won't be 0 mod 3. And this will be something else mod 3. So effectively, you'll never be able to get 0 mod 3 over here. So a cannot be 0 mod 3. Similarly, if you take a is equal to minus 1 mod 3, then this will obviously be 0 mod 3. But then again, this won't be, this, this will be like 2 mod 3. Right? Because minus 1 is 2 mod 3 and the raised to the power n plus 1 will be the same. So this, this will never again be 0 mod 3 for these two values. So effectively, a can never be 0 or 2 mod 3. So therefore, a has to be 1 mod 3. So now that we've figured out a has to be 1 mod 3, I can just reduce this equation, or rather this equation over here, to 1 raised to the power n plus 1 minus of minus 1 raised to the power n is congruent to 0 mod 3. Because essentially, minus 1 is, this is nothing but two mo minus 2 mod 3, 1 mod 3 is uh, minus 2 mod 3 and if I just plug in minus 2 mod 3 over here, I'll get minus 1 raised to the power n and 1 mod 3 obviously over here to get this. So effectively, this is kind of what we have reduced it down to. Now, 1 raised to the power n plus 1 is obviously going to be 1. So negative of negative 1 raised to the power n, this has to be 0 mod 3. And let's say you analyze the parity of n. So for example, if n is even, let's say if n is even, what will we get? minus uh, 1 minus minus 1 raised to the even power right which will effectively be 1 minus of 1 which is 0 and on the right hand side also we have 0 mod 3 this is perfect so n is even works if n is odd if n is odd minus 1 raised to the odd is obviously minus 1 so we'll get 1 minus of minus 1 right which will be obviously 2 on the left hand side we get 2 right hand side is 0 mod 3 this does not work therefore n has to be even that's great because we figured out the parity of n. We figured out what n will be. Okay, that's great. So moving forward, moving forward, where were we? So we had kind of like uh, deduced that n needs to be even. So effectively, minus 1 raised to the n plus 1 needs to be congruent to 2001 mod a plus 1. And this is, I believe, equation number 2 that I had marked over here. Yep. Minus 1 raised to the power n plus 1 is 2001 mod a plus 1. This is just equation number 2. And because of the fact that n is even, 
my, this becomes essentially minus one raised to an odd quantity, which will be minus one. That'll be congruent to 2001 mod a plus one. So effectively, 2002 is congruent to zero mod a plus one. And earlier, in what I had marked in equation number one, it was 2002 is congruent to zero mod a. So effectively, a divides 2002 and a plus one also divides 2002. So this means that two consecutive numbers divide 2002 and 2002 the prime factorization is 2 into 7 into 11 into 13, four primes over here. And the really only consecutive divisors are 13 and 14. And you can just check that out playing around a little bit that these are the only two consecutive divisors of 2002. But therefore we get A is equal to 13. So now, now, now what was the problem? What was the problem? So we kind of reduced the problem significantly actually over here. It was a raised power n plus 1 minus a plus 1 raised power n is equal to 2001. And now that we figured out a is 13, so this is essentially 13 raised power n plus 1 minus um, 14 raised power n is equal to 2001. And if you just play around with this a little bit, you'll actually see that um, n is equal to 2 is a solution, right? Because um, 13 cube minus 14 square apparently becomes 2001. But yeah, that's just hit and try, you know, that's not, that's not, that's not a legitimate uh, solution to it, obviously. So we're going to maybe have to prove if there exists more solutions or probably n is equal to is the only solution. You can also check that n is equal to one does not hold. Okay, does not hold, does not satisfy. Now, obviously it does not satisfy because 13 square is 169 minus 14 is 145. So it's nowhere even close to 2001. But um, anyways, so just playing around, we figured out that n is equal to 2 is a solution. But now maybe we kind of let's see if it is the only solution or if there exists some other solutions. So for uh, let's consider for n greater than or equal to 2. Let's consider for n greater than or equal to 2. If we just take mod 8, right? If I just try to bash mod 8 and let's see what we get. So we have this thing, right? 13 raised to the power n plus 1 minus 14 raised to the power n is equal to 2001. So I'm going to try and bash mod 8, but before that, I'm probably going to see what values 14 raised to the power n gives uh, with respect to mod 8. So 14 raised to the power n is nothing but minus 2 raised to the power n mod 8, as 14 is minus 2 mod 8. That's pretty clear. And uh, 14 raised to the power n, so if I just start plugging in some certain values of n, so if I just plug in, let's say n is equal to 1, it will give me minus 2. If I put an n is equal to 2, it will give me 4. If I put an n is equal to 3, it will give me negative 8 mod 8, but that's 0. If I put an n is equal to 4, it gives me 16 mod 8, but that's again 0. If I plug in n is equal to 5, it gives us minus 32 mod 8, which is again 0. So effectively, effectively, 14 raised to the power n is going to be congruent to minus 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, up till, up till infinity mod 8. So, so for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2, it gives certain value, certain non-zero value mod 8. But for all n greater than 2, right, for all n greater than 2, it is 0 mod 8, right? And it's actually, it would probably be better to check n greater than 2. The strict inequality would probably be better because we are getting a solution of n is equal to 2, right? So, yes, so for n greater than, equal to n greater than 2, 14 this power n is congruent to 0 mod 8. And um, that, that's, that's really great actually, because now if I just check n greater than two or rather n greater than equal to three, then I can effectively reduce this problem, what we had to something else, right? So for n greater than equal to three, what can I say? So this will be minus three raised to the power n plus one is congruent to one mod eight. And um, again, really, so if, if you actually just, again, just plug in certain values, for example, if I plug in n is equal to 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, let's just analyze what values we get. If I plug in n is equal to 0, I get minus 3 uh, mod 8. If I plug in n is equal to 1, I will get how much? 9 mod 8, but that's just 1. If I plug in n is equal to 2, I'll get minus 27 mod 8, but this is just minus 3. If I plug in n is equal to 3, I'll get 81 mod 8, but that's just 1, and so on and so forth. This is a repeating pattern. So minus 3 is for n plus 1 will be congruent to minus 3 comma 1 mod 8 always and this is kind of a repeating pattern so if n is even i get minus 3 right 0 2 4 i'll always get minus 3 and when n is odd i'll get 1 so it needs to be 1 mod 8 so therefore n has to be odd and is odd but that's a contradiction that's a very big contradiction because here you see i'm seeing n is odd above above i said that n is even right let me just find that when i said oh yeah 
n is even. So here we are claiming that essentially n is even, n has to be even over here. That you that was what we are claiming for um for this to hold. For this to hold, n had to be even. But over here we're essentially claiming that n is odd. This is a contradiction. And therefore, we have no solutions for n greater than 2 or greater than equal to 3, doesn't matter. So therefore, solutions can only exist for n equals to 1 and n equals to 2. And we really check that this works and this doesn't. So therefore, the only solution is a13 and n is equal to so 13 comma 2 is the only kind of like pair that satisfies this good equation so yeah i really hope you uh, enjoyed that and it was quite nice actually we started with some sort of a weird kind of looking equation and um really no numbers all variables and yeah, so we kind of reduced it mod a mod a plus one then try to reduce the right hand side right hand side thankfully it was like an integer so we could probably take like mod three mod seven something like that and just try to reduce it and the key takeaway kind of would be that whenever you're trying to reduce with the modulus of certain number, if the equation is not reducing beyond a point, you probably might just take another number, right? So here we took mod a, it did reduce to some finite cases of a. Then we took mod a plus one, right? If mod a is working, a plus one should also work because it's kind of the same, right? And then obviously we try to reduce the right hand side as well. 2001 divisible by three, you can clearly see that. Uh, sum of this is three. So yeah, mod three and, and, and it all worked out in the end. Right, so yeah, quite quite interesting uh, question of number theory. Okay, so moving forward, we have certain book sessions for college mathematics, introduction to real analysis, principles of mathematical analysis, calculus volume one, volume two, topology, contemporary abstract algebra, top skin algebra, abstract algebra, and linear algebra. Okay, so we have a similar but challenging problem, and I want you to find all primes p such that n is one thousand one p. And a to the power n is equal to a mod n. So a to the power n is congruent to a mod n. And n is 1000 and p. 1001 p. And this holds for all a, for all values of a. Right? So yeah, just make just tie it out maybe. And a little tricky, I know, but uh, it's quite an interesting problem actually. If you get the correct approach, it'll be pretty simple. So yes, if you're able to make any progress on it or if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section below. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Sinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.